Walker. This is City Council Public Safety Subcommittee meeting, September 15th, 5 p.m. ish. So, approval of the minutes from the previous meeting. We don't have those. I didn't print them out. So, why don't we? We'll put that, we'll put that off. Public speak time. Seeing no one here from the public, we can go to the continuing business discussion of the draft street acceptance protocol. So I know planning was able to take a pick, uh, take a look at it, and right. I had asked them. I, I got really great notes from Jess, but I really kind of wanted to get an opinion from the planning board themselves, like try and get a little daylight between those two opinions. And um, they don't want to look at it until Jess's notes are incorporated. Well, I actually went because they put it in front of there, and I kind of went just to hear what their opinion was. I went yeah. and I was off and. And thank you for that. I had so a they did talk scheduling conflict. And, and, I just and, couldn't. And they, like often with the planning board, they pretty much said whatever just want. Whatever the planner says. Uh, their only question was just is still a little in if she comes on this issue. Is, I think she's still a little confused how she can invoice them because some of the ones, some put up a bond, some of them put up a, like we did on this one a lot. Mm -hmm. So I think she said that she felt they needed, or she, she needed at least for the planning board, more clarification on the invoice. And then one of the planning board members, I think it was Harry, he talked about well, who, who decided how much the. I got the number street, from Joe Pip. I went right to DPW. Well, yeah. I told him, I said, I believe it was public work. I mean, yeah. you know, I, you know, that would be my, my assumption. But I said, I'll ask. But I assume. Nope. Exactly I what we did. And then uh, Jessica said, if, if asked if the city clerk had seen it or had, or if she had said at one point she hadn't seen it, if they, because she's mentioned in there a little bit, if, if she had come back with it. I know she's mentioned in there, but I said I don't know if. if yep, Barbara, Barbara and I emailed back and forth Barbara about it. It's not actually going to be an ordinance. That's that's not. Well, that's what then. That was their other question: Is it going to be an ordinance or no. is it going to be a policy? No, it's policy. Because okay. that was their other question. Um, see, ordinance slash policy question. Yeah. And then would there be a public hearing if it's? And I said, well, there would definitely have to be a public hearing if it's an ordinance, but a policy. I'm not sure if you'd have a public hearing, but I said generally matters like this we do have a public hearing. Yep, exactly. Because it's kind of changing the way we go. So that's what the public planning board and those were the questions they kind of had, additional questions they had on So yeah, it would be a policy that I keep in the public safety subcommittee folder. It is not in any official documents such as city ordinances. You could talk to Dan if he thinks city council rules so I can ask Chris to test. Yeah. yeah. So I said, I don't know how, and again, I would, uh, the invoicing, as I said, that was the one thing Jessica really wasn't sure. And then she very scarily said, I think we can do whatever works best. I think having a policy and procedures manual for this and other common city council actions would be a big help when I'm not around anymore. Hey, and I was like, I'm not even thinking about that. <laughs> so it could be part of the council rules because of the rules of procedure, city council time time, adopt rules for regulation. So I'm just going to clarify that with Dan, but yeah, policy and procedures for city council. Very good. So Jess had said that, you know, to make the edits that she said and then send it back to the planning board. board right. But I think we're also going to roll in. I'm thinking about just having a sheet where whomever's doing the street acceptance can be like, yep, I, I checked with the police chief, I checked with the fire chief, I checked with the conservation commission, right. just so that we know that those things happened. And I did mention the, uh, this was something I mentioned. Because I said we were down there on the street acceptances on Paul Street. And I said, um, I kind of mentioned like when the planning board, you know, I said it, I didn't know if this was how, how we could work this, but I said when you give exempt, exemptions like to in a plan subdivision, in other mm -hmm. words, when you say like take it, I went to the grid. Yeah, you said yeah. in for cost, you said, okay, you don't have to put in the granite curbing, you have to put in the berms. I said, that is a problem because when they're still under construction, they break the berms down. And I said, I think you've got to make them aware. I mean, you actually have to put them in, but you may have to repair them before the city takes it over because I said, we don't want to take the street over and then have us paid to put in the berms. I mean, it's got to be, we accept the street. The berms mm -hmm. got to be back in, in, you know, that's your prerogative to agree to the burns, but you got to make it known to the contractor, you know, if you break them while you're constructing, you're going to have to repair them before it's accepted. Right. And if they meet conditions, I mentioned like the sign. And the light and nobody seems to be able to fit the light. 
Yeah, do you want to move on to Paul Street then? Sure. So So that was the plan of the board. And did that seem reasonable to them? Yes, they, they were yeah. good on that. You know, and I think, and again, going sort of on, maybe this was way off the thing, but I think it's, it's you know, we're seeing, and maybe this is a whole thing for the city at some point to talk about it, maybe be on my time, but I don't know how boards can get along. You know, in other words, a little bit on like when we talked about the brewery, and, and you know, here's two boards that are kind of doing dual actions, and you know, how to, how to, how do we know what each board is doing? Because one board can have a right. effect on another. Well, and the minutes are on the website, right. and there's That's no way to even like catch up. Like right. even if you wanted to know what happened at a meeting last night, right? There's, it's not. It, right. There's there's no way to know what happened. Right. Right. Yeah. No, we don't. And I've been See, looking at like how a lot of other municipalities <coughs> get information out. You know. Theoretically, every board is supposed to file their, and I think the city council does it pretty well, there's a couple other boards, every board is supposed to file a copy, oh, not only with their committee, but also with the city clerk, so that anyone can walk into the city clerk's office. Now, with technology today, and again, I don't know what Barbara's technology is, but if, if the board minutes were being turned into the clerk's office, it seems like you could scan board minutes and you're not yeah. maybe going to get them in real time no, you're, not, you're not going to get what the conservation did last night because they probably don't have them yet but certainly by a week you're going to be able to or if a, you know if a, if a thing goes from planning to licensing or from planning to the you know public safety you can certainly go back to the planning of that date right if it's if it's not. well and the other thing is i would think with something like a license you would know that this you know whatever entity it had some sort of interaction with some other board. department or board at City Hall, and it would be on your due diligence to, to go get to that board. information, you know? But okay. On to Paul Street. On to Paul Street. So, I think we have to send it back to Planet. Okay. Um, did you see the email I sent earlier? Um, I don't think so. Okay. So, I sent an email earlier about this. To Planet? Uh, about the Paul Street extension. Oh no, it was Joe. Sorry, my apologies. So, uh, Jared, who's from the um, Pasquamic mm -hmm. Conservation, I emailed him and because he, he had checked in with me today and I said, all right, how prescient of you. Our subcommittee meeting is actually this evening. We did a site visit and it doesn't even appear close to being ready. We're going to discuss sending it back to planning. And one aspect that specifically concerns the Piscomic crew is that the entrance to your property is completely blocked off by construction debris and mounds of soil and greenery. And then I gave him a link to the images. Um, but unfortunately, I don't believe this falls under the street acceptance criteria, right. but wanted you to know. Uh, if you'd like to join us this evening, we'd be happy to discuss with you. And as a side note, I think you guys do a great job. Of it. Um, so you're saying we should send it back to the planning board so that they can make sure their conditions are all being met. I think so because they set the conditions. Set like the conditions. we don't we don't know who's mowing that center thing. And it right. looks like right. crap. Um, I don't know. Like I mean, that's just nuts for the Pasquama Club. Like no, I mean they want to put up a sign. I mean, there's no way to do it. I mean, that is again, and because we don't have a compliance officer. That, but I mean, how does the planning board? And I'm, mean, you know, you never try to put more work on them. But if they set conditions at some point, shouldn't they have to go out and make sure their conditions are being met? I mean, and I that's, I don't know if they're, I don't. I mean, I'm not trying to be. There. Right. So that's what the new street protocol does. Is right. that by it's, the time it gets to city council, whomever's all, doing it, everything's, everything's been checked, checked off, off and, and then it's, it's, it's kind of, out, take it you know, look at it and procedural, and and it's done because. Trying to reverse engineer all of this stuff right. that happened by the time it hits us is just right. because then you're sending back because you know in a sense we don't probably have authority to no. as you said like through the signs with this trust. Not I really mean, if Jess is great, she sent me everything she had, but there's no there's no minutes to a meeting where this was discussed yeah. at any point, like whether or not yes, we feel like this is good enough to go to city council or these are the waivers or. So yeah, I don't, I don't know what the planning board's intent was with the waiver, so there's no way for us to really know that it, 
the criteria yeah. was met. No, I didn't. So they, this is just an email that says that they were, they were, the planning board found that the conditions listed in these decisions were met to their satisfaction and voted through nothing. Granted, that was October 19th, 2011. I don't know why it didn't. But how can you, I guess in 2011, how can you say the conditions are met? I mean, if it was a condition, one of the conditions of signing it, and like a trail was like the entrance of the trail, obviously that. I think that's separate, but I don't know anything about, you know, there's nothing like. And like who, again, I'm getting going back to who turns who's on, it, who, who turns on that lamp? Who, who turns on the lamp, who, who maintains the, the cul-de-sac? You know, once we accept it, you know, we're going to end up maintaining it. So, and, and basically, these are the notes that, like, the quality of the work overall was low. Like, these are the notes I made while everybody was kind of looking. Um, pine trees transplanted to further screen the development. We don't know if that happens. The stop sign is an NA. Not responsible for the long-term maintenance. They don't identify who. A performance guarantee and an amount what happens but we don't have and the applicant shall receive approval from the Conservation Commission which we don't have right. so th th and that's so I guess we could send them back to the and say we have some serious questions so we the street right I mean we tried well, I mean we got it last fall and then it snowed we couldn't see it and then when we saw it it was like I just I can't and I, and I feel bad about the Pastrama Club being like, hey, we want to put this sign up and hurry up. And I'm like, yeah. And now I don't get before the fall. I know. I showed him the pictures. Well, I sent the pictures. I didn't hear back. But we can do that, right? We can send it back to planning? I think we can send it back, certainly, and ask. In other words, here's some concerns. I would, I would just type on the phone and send it to you. And ask it at the next meeting. What can you have them we'll put it on the agenda just so that they can say what you know? What, you know, we don't know. Can you, can you tell us who's supposed to in your deliberations? You have a call to set. Who's supposed to maintain the call to set? Right. Was it discussed? I mean, maybe they never discussed it. I mean, I don't know. Then who, I guess that that would be the question. Say that never came up. You know, but it's I mean, then who can, can we decide that? I don't know. I think we can decide that. <laughs> I mean, it should be something for the planning board to have decided. Right. Yeah. I mean, I don't even know if it's the same planning board members. You know, they, well, maybe oh, yeah, it's nobody who even right. ever looked Several at it. Several of them might have been. That, so. I don't know when that originally started, but you know, and there's certainly probably a couple of them. members. I think mean, Jim, Jim Dallin, of course, I don't know if he didn't guarantee it. He probably would have done it. Right. Yeah. But I think what you were saying, like, when you know, the note that I made about the quality of the work overall was kind of low. It has to do with the fact that these waivers were made and then right. there's still just a lot of construction going right. on. And it just kind of runs. It just doesn't look finished. It doesn't, that, and that was one of the big questions. It's, it's like, not, does I this look I, ready? It's like, right. no, it And doesn't. I know things can go, you know, maybe you can't sell all the lots in a year and a half, you know, maybe things, but right. to me it still should look, as a lot's done and everything should kind of look squared away from home, it just looks yeah. No, and it's a bummer because I want to accept it. You know what I mean? I want more miles in the town. Absolutely. But, yeah. All right, so we're just going to send. Just get a bit of information from the planning board if they have any additional information they can provide to us on these things. Yep. Well, I'm pretty sure the waivers I got an email from Jess, so I can just reply back and just. I made notes about each question of the waiver, but I didn't want to talk about it until we were here in the meeting. No, and, and Jim was certainly helpful. Yes, know. absolutely. So, I'll copy him on it as well. Okay. Do you have an uh, No, that was it. I think those, we're going to have a couple after tomorrow. So. Oh, yeah? There's some polls. I like right. emails. Huh? I really, really, really would like my packet information in the email. Electronic. Yeah. 
I just happened to be down early earlier today. Well, yesterday, it was yesterday today. I, I got picked it up yesterday because I was done here for conservation. All right, so I will take a motion. Do so we have to do? Do we have to do a vote on that? To send it back to planning? No, I don't think so. I think out if you want to, I'll make a motion to send it back to planning for the advisory opinion. Second. All those in favor? All right. All right. Um, and then a motion to adjourn. Yes. Yes. Motion to make a motion to adjourn. So moved. Five.